there's something on the surface right here. Oh, that's them. That's them. Dude, I saw one that was... Had to be at least, at least 40 pounds. Minimum. That's what you're right now. This is the start of a possible three day mission to catch one type of fish. And this one type of fish is very, very elusive. You know, it's kind of, you know, a little bit mysterious. And if you fish the Bay Area a lot, you might know what I'm talking about, but hopefully we can find them today. I've, he I've heard a rumor that there's some around. They're definitely not a guaranteed thing, but I brought a lot of gear today. I brought all of my big boy rods, I got sabikis, I got frozen bait, I got my live bait tanks, and I have some big setups here uh, to try and find this fish. And I would say, honestly, it's kind of unlikely, actually, that I catch this fish, um, but that's not gonna deter me. Just because something's unlikely doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. But anyways, uh, the reason, or because it's so unlikely, I'm also gonna be doing some halibut commercial fishing along the way. Um, a lot of the baits that I'm gonna be using, uh, you know, you can catch halibut or this other fish on, so um, kind of multi-purpose type thing. But anyways, yeah, I wanna do some live bait fishing today. I haven't done any live bait fishing yet this year. So first things first, we gotta find the light bait. I'm kind of trolling a little swim bait here. I don't have a lot of confidence in that. So it's just kind of out there, just, I don't know, off chance that something happens there. But the real goal is to find some live bait. I'm just kind of moving around, looking for that bait ball on the fish finder, watching these birds fly overhead, see if they see anything. Um, because if they do, then I'll be watching them. And then I'll follow them, obviously. So. Anyways, that's the plan for today. A lot in store, and like I said, it's possible three-day mission. I got the next three days completely cleared up. No plans. My only plan is to hunt this one very specific, serious fish. I'm very excited for this. I haven't, I haven't been out on the water this early in a long time, and um, yeah, I'm excited. All right, let's do this. And another thing today, I mean, I really you should always be doing this, but especially today, I'm gonna to be keeping my eyes peeled. Always making sure to look behind me on each side, just for any signs of anything. Sometimes these fish are can be actually cruising on the surface and you can see their wakes or their fins sticking out of the water. Dude, look at this thing. This might be the biggest smelt I've ever caught. Definitely not what we're looking for, but something I, I would want. Oh, kingfish. Yeah, that's not that's not gonna work today. Shoot, huge marks. Look at that. 43, 44 feet of water, two huge arches. Whatever those are, those are big fish. Um, not sure if it's what we're looking for, but it very well could be. I'm just gonna toss that. All right, let me put that in free spool. So if something hits this, it's just gonna freely go there. And then while I do that, I'll just toss the swim bait on my other rod. See if we mark that thing again, whatever it was. All right, well, no live bait. Well, I guess I did catch that. I caught some smelt and some kingfish, but none of the ones that I mentioned earlier that I was looking for. So I'm gonna drop down a frozen squid to the bottom and this definitely could get picked up by our mystery fish. 
or more likely I think is we'll find some halibut with this so let's see how this goes still just drifting around out here I don't know what it was earlier that we marked but uh, something big and so far no luck on the fly line here and I was casting the swim bait a little bit no luck on that either but um, you know obviously good sign of fish in the area whatever well whatever that was was big and there's two of them um, so usually sharks don't hang or at least you know the big sharks don't hang out together at least like great white sharks they're not going to swim together so it's it's not one of those i guess it could be a smaller shark sometimes i don't know if they swim in packs like that or not but um i feel like sharks are more solitary fish like they're going to be um separate from each other so i don't know whatever it is we're going to try and catch it so just drifting around here hoping that you know those fish swim back through got a squid down Oh, what was that? Something just jumped all the way out of the water. There's definitely life out here. I don't know what that was. It kind of looked like a shark, but I don't know. Couldn't tell for sure. Oh, oh, oh. here we go. Here we go. Something's on here. What is this? I don't know what this is. This is the squid on the bottom. This could be a halibut. I feel like it might be a halibut. No? Yep, halibut. And... I think it's a keeper. Let's grab this one and see. A lot going on here. No, don't normally like to fish with this many rods because a little bit chaotic. But make an exception today. There we go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a keeper. Pretty sure that's like 20. I'm gonna say 24. Let's keep my guess. Mouth closed. 23 and a half. Nice. So keeper size on these California halibut are 22 is 22 inches, and that is definitely a keeper. All right, first fish in the box. Brown on one side, white on the other. California halibut. So like I was saying earlier, definitely possibility to catch all these while we're out here chasing the big fish. halibut that's definitely a halibut look at those head shakes yeah that's another keeper oh look at the teeth marks on that one something tried to grab this one at some point That's another keeper, but look at those. It's pretty, I think it's pretty fresh. Whatever it was, I guess it would be seal. Yeah, you can see he's all beat up. Even the tail, tail's pretty split there. I don't think that's from a net. Sometimes you see the fish with some tail rot there from the from getting netted as a, as a youngster halibut, but I'm pretty sure I mean, you can see those scrapes there. I, my, my money would be on sea lion. Sea lions are notorious halibut predators. Yeah, it's a little bigger. About 25. You know, what might have happened is it might have got hooked by another angler and then a sea lion grabbed it while whoever that angler was was fighting this fish, maybe. But, uh, yeah, he's definitely seen better days. We'll put him out of his misery. A little bit of a beat up fish. All right, 
Live bait's been a little tough. I just got a smelt here. Put it in the live bait tank. I think I'm gonna drop this down rather than squid. I want to save some squid in case the signs improve. Who knows? With all this life out here, maybe somebody else will grab it, but I think more than likely we got a good chance for a halibut to eat this one. Yep, there it is. Oh, it came off. Dang it, that felt like a good. Melt. Yep, got munched. Let's see if we got him this time. Yeah, that time I got him. Thought there was thought we were pretty much on pure sand, but apparently there's a little reef out here. There's a little ling. Probably actually keeper if we we're keeping them, but we're not going for links today, so he gets to live on. Here's my game plan so far. It could definitely change, but for now, my game plan is today we're gonna go all in and really try to find that mystery fish. So I'm gonna go, right now I'm gonna cruise the kelp bed line. I think I'm gonna forgo this one. I'm actually gonna go that way and cruise the kelp bed line, see if I see anything, hopefully, I can find something good. If not, then, oh, well, at least we tried. And then tomorrow, we'll go hard for halibut. And then the following day, we'll clean up whatever halibut we need to do. And then after that, we'll go search for this mystery fish again. But the whole time, obviously, I'm gonna keep my eyes out. If at any time I see something that looks fishy, we're gonna go chase it. I'll, I'll quit halibut fishing at any time to go try and find these fish. But yeah, that's the plan for now. All right, full steam ahead. Let's see what we can find. There's something on the surface right here. Oh, that's them. That's them. They're all right here. They're all right here. I just spooked them. They're swimming by. I'm trying to not move very quickly. I just spooked them. They're all underneath the kayak right now. Huge marks. Okay, I'm gonna cast. They all swim that way, so. Let's see if they can. Let's see if they'll, they might not bite because I just spooked them. I saw one fin on the surface. There's one swimming right here. Huge, huge. That one's gotta be like 50 pounds. Problem is I'm right up in the kelp. So uh, if I hook up in here, it's gonna be a disaster. I don't know how I'm gonna get them. It's gonna be really tough. But uh, yeah, anyways, I saw one fin on the surface and I wasn't sure what it was. Went up to inspect it a little bit, and there was a huge school of probably, uh, I don't know, I didn't see them all. Pro I saw like at least 30, 40 fish, and I'm sure there was more that I didn't see. But anyways, we found them, they're around here. Heart's racing.
all around here. I just stood up and I saw one swim off. They're super skittish right now because the sun came out, unfortunately. You know, if it was still overcast, I think I'd have a better chance at getting them to bite. Fortunately, I spooked Oh, there, I can see them feeling over there. Okay, I gotta go that way. So, I'm gonna cast this swim bait right in front of those tails that are on the surface and see what happens. There, it was a mixed grade of fish, the ones that I saw. I wanna say it was all the way from like undersized fish, which is like you know, 20 inches, all the way up to. Dude, I saw one that was had to be at least at least 40 pounds minimum honestly it could have been more they are all around here I don't know I can't see them at the moment but I can just I can just sense them they're, they're around here I saw one tailing over there and then I heard a splash over here We are definitely in the zone. It's a huge school. I'm gonna run right across them. If they're hungry, they're gonna eat this right now. Okay, the swim bait's not working. Not working right now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pitch a frozen smelt or no a frozen squid. Sorry, let me talk right now. I pitch it just on a totally fly line. I didn't waste all these on the halibut, we would have had more baits, but I have I made sure to save a couple. I got two left. A pretty light line, which is ideal considering I think right now with the Water being so clear, that's definitely gonna help me. Now I just gotta locate them again. I'm passing through them right now. All right, they're, they're swimming through here. Oh, it just smelled, dang it. Oh, the tentacles right off, damn. All right, I have one squid left, and I'm gonna save this one because the smelt just took, tore out my last one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have that at the ready, and I'm gonna put a fresh swim bait on here, a little bit different size and color, because maybe that'll make a difference. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna cast this swim bait at them, and then if I happen to just go right on, you know, they're sitting right here, I'll just drop the, sm the squid on them, see if they go for that. But running a little low on bait, it'd be nice if I had a live anchovy or something. That would definitely help, I think. But unfortunately, I don't. here I'm kind of using there's there's like some kelp in between me and the fish which probably not gonna be great if I do happen to hook one of these but uh, I'm kind of using that as a guard oh, oh these fish are so lazy they won't bite it unless it goes right in front of their face Oh, it's right there. 
We got him. I'm squid. I flipped it right up in there and grabbed it. Oh, it's on big time. So I got braid on here and that should help me cut through some kelp if I need to. But I'm not using super heavy line because, because it's so light out. I was sizing down my line to try and get a bite. Which we did, but now, now the challenge comes. Through this camera. Oh man. Yes, it's working good. Yes, it's working good. Always on the surface. Okay. Oh man, this is war. <laughs> I gotta tire him out. Wrapped up all kinds of kelp. Okay, through that kelp. Oh my god, we're we're in deep here. This is gonna be a challenge. It's a big fish though. I, I got a glimpse of him. He's probably at least 20 pounds, 20 to 30. And every time I rip through the kelp, I hear that, you feel that boom. It's like heart stopping. Get some more kelp right here. I don't want to get in too much kelp, but a little bit we can work through. Man, it's gonna get so wrapped up. There's so much kelp around here. Do this one. Gaining a little. It's a good thing. Gaining a little. Gaining. Here it comes. We're getting closer. Getting closer. Yes, there we go, through that one. Okay, here we go. This is working good. We got through the initial run. I mean, he took some good runs, you guys, you got to see it. But now we're into the nitty gritty. This is where we're gonna bust through some kelp. So having that braid is key. Oh, it's right here. Oh, it's right here. Okay, it's all wrapped up in this kelp right here. But I can see the fish. Oh, it's so close. It's so close. Oh my god. Uh, somehow I gotta get, I gotta maneuver this thing. I can see the fish, but I can also see it mound of kelp that he's wrapped up in. Oh, I don't know. This is going to be tough. Alright. I'm going to loosen my drag. Problem is now we're, we're through all the braid. Now I just have the floro leader. I think he's, is he slowly coming out? I can't tell. I think we're slowly gaining some line. all wrapped up in this thing. I saw the fish for a second. I don't see him anymore. I'm sure he's in that ball of kelp though. Oh yeah, there we go. Get him off the kelp. Get him off the kelp. Oh, get him off the kelp. Okay, let's, let's tighten up a little bit. Oh yeah. Come on. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Cannot miss this gaff. First gaff shot. We need. We need this to be a good gaff shot. Oh no no no! No 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 no! Stay here. Stay here. Oh no! 
every time he gets close to the kayak, he starts freaking out a little bit. Uh, I have to just grab it. Okay, come on. I think I'm just gonna grab him. Easier to grab him at this point. Got him! Yeah! <sighs> we got him. We got him. Alright. Got him on that little hook right there. Look at that. I had this the squid on the little hook. I really think that real not finesse. I don't know if you can call it finesse for fishing with the big tackle, but a little bit lighter line than I normally would use. I really think that helped. And then I pitched that. It was the last squid I had. I don't have any more squid in the tank. But uh, yeah, anyways, it was the last one. I flipped it up in there and I saw a school swim by. And I mean, I, I, that already happened a couple of times, but this time I gave it a little flick. And then I saw I saw the the fish boil on it, so I'm just crashed that squid, and uh, yeah, let him take it a little bit, just make sure he had it, set that hook, and it was game time, man. That was an epic battle, wrapped up in at least three or four different balls of kelp. But uh, yeah, like I was saying, having that braid, um, you know, you, you need a top shot leader for a bra or for uh, visibility, but having the braid behind that super super helpful that helped me cut through a lot of that that kelp and then uh yeah we were wrapped up in one it was definitely wrapped up. oh man nine liter is so chafed up but yeah i was wrapped up in one little kelp ball right there at the end and uh well not quite the end but whatever farther into the battle and that was just on the floral leader so i couldn't break through the kelp on that one but luckily you know i just kind of stayed the course and he was able to swim out of that little angle that we were in. <sighs> oh, we did it. Man, I looked all morning too. I didn't see anything all morning. And um, yeah, we did some halibut fishing, like I was saying, and then got back on the sea bass grind after catching a few halibut. Oh man, this is so big. This has got to be, I mean, I don't know how long it is. I don't have a tape measure long enough. I don't think. Maybe I do have a tape measure in here. Nope, no tape measure. Yeah, so minimum size on uh, white sea bass. Make sure it's a white sea bass. There's no, uh, we also have black sea bass, which are illegal to take, they're endangered. But um, anyways, size limit on white sea bass is 28 inches. Um, and this one, I mean, it's clearly over 28. I want to say it's probably, 45 maybe somewhere around there 40 to 45 i don't know i'll give it a measurement once i get a tape measure back at home and then i'll put it in the comments here in the little caption here i'm pretty sure i said this in the video before you know before catching i was like man if i hook up in here it's gonna be a it's gonna be a freaking battle because there's so much kelp. I mean, i'm surrounded by kelp i'm not on the kelp line i'm in literally inside the kelp just because that's where i was seeing all the fish swim through um but uh, yeah, there was a little bit of clearing, you know, like right here where I'm at, there's there's like a good, I don't know, I wanna say like 10 yard radius on in every direction where there's no kelp, it's kind of like a bare area. Um, so there's always these, but man, I, I mean, you saw the fish, it was running at first. It wrapped around like three or four right away. No stopping it, especially with this lighter line. I have to give a shout out to a couple guys, Crispy Fish and Outdoor Chef Life. They gave me some intel on this. They came out here and unfortunately they weren't able to get a keeper, but this one's for you guys. Uh, white sea bass. Maybe not 45 inches, but at least 40. Sure. Pointy teeth. Those are built to grab on to bait, squid, fin fish, and not let go, which is exactly what this guy did to my squid. Speaking of crispy fish, he actually took me out on another adventure where we tried to get some halibut and unfortunately I didn't catch any fish on that one so I never got to make a video out of it. But uh, yeah, special shout out to him. He's taken me, that's twice now he's taken me. The first time we got some salmon, 
but uh, yeah, last time was a little tough, so I didn't get to make a video. So that was unfortunate, but yeah, he actually came out here for sea bass uh, a couple days ago, and uh, you'll have to wait. If his video is out already by now, I'll put a link in the description. If not, just go subscribe to his channel and you'll have to wait. I think it'll be coming up pretty soon. So the limit on sea bass is actually three per person per day, but I'm not sure I can take another one. Also, I don't have any more squid left, so I'd have to catch it on the swim bait. But uh, well, that's definitely possible, but man, I don't know if I can handle another one. That was a lot of work. My arms are dead. One actual key identifier of the sea bass, I mean, this one's so big, it's easy to tell, but when they're a little bit smaller, there's a few different croaker species that look very similar, but they have this belly, this line on the belly. I think they call it a zippered belly. So I don't know if you can see that there, but there's a little ridge right down the middle from the, uh, whatever these fins are, I'm not sure exactly, but anyways, all the way down to the butt, they have this little ridge right there. So if you're ever confused, especially on the smaller ones, I mean, these have to be 28 inches in order to keep anyway. So I don't know if those other croaker species get to that big. But anyways, if you're trying to identify different croaker species, I'm pretty sure that's one key identifying feature that only the white sea bass have. I do want to show you one more thing. So very, very common when people catch a sea bass is they want to save the otolith, which is the, I think it's the ear bone inside the head here. So once I clean this up and I take those bones out, I'll show you a little bit of that process and what those things look like. They're super, super hard. They're kind of like, you know how oysters have pearls in them? It's kind of like the pearl of the fish, which actually all kinds of fish have, but for some reason, people really like the sea bass otoliths. All right, well, it's getting late, but we finally got around to the filet of this fish, and this is the stomach. There's definitely something in there. We'll look at that in a second. But I promised I would show you the otolith, which is the ear bone inside the head here. So I can't really hold the phone and carve at the same time, so let me carve them out, and then I'll reconvene here. All right, so we got the, I had to use this thing. So I actually had to like pry the skull open, but inside here, there's those two oliths. Kind of covered in some goo, but there's one. There's two, and I believe these are the ear bones. They're super hard. They're like literally rocks inside the head of the, uh, of the sea bass. As far as I know, every fish has these and scientists actually use these to determine the age of the fish. It's kind of like um, the rings of a tree. I think if you cut this open, slice it down the middle, it has rings for every year that that fish is alive. So if I were to do that, I could tell the age of the sea bass just from this little bone right here. So I've got a few of these from fish that I've caught. Haven't done anything with them yet, but who knows, maybe someday Maybe we'll make like a puka shell necklace out of all of them. If I catch enough of them, I don't know. Just an idea, but anyways, cool little memento to remember your fish. Yep, some big fish. Let's see, what is this? I believe it's pretty well digested. It's kind of hard to tell. I believe those are a couple of Good size anchovies, but definitely ate it a while ago. Man, those things smell. Let's throw those away. Anyways, I gotta finish cleaning up here. It's already like midnight and I gotta get back at it tomorrow. Cause like I said at the beginning of this video, this is not a one day adventure, even though I did catch one today. I'm still going back out there tomorrow and the next day. And tomorrow I'm bringing some special buddies of mine. Day two, let's go get them. Nothing like putting on a wetsuit that's already wet. All right, we made it out even earlier than yesterday. It's still kind of gray light. We're about to get out in the water here. Uh, you're with a special buddy of mine. You'll see in a bit, but look at this guy. No wetsuit, just in shorts. He's out there. I don't know what he's doing. Working out, I guess. Shadow boxing. There's the man. <laughs> Round two, day number two. Today we're out here with, you've already seen him, Taku, and uh, Nick's, Nick's supposed to come later. We'll see if he makes it. We're gonna start off in the same area that we were in yesterday where we marked all those fish. Um, if you saw those drone shots, I actually took those after uh, I caught that fish yesterday and 
I mean, there must have been a hundred plus fish in that school. So um, definitely still out here somewhere. Uh, I guess most likely out here somewhere. Um, we just gotta find them. So yeah, we're gonna start in that same area. I feel like in the morning, like when it's still kind of dark like it is right now, the fog's overhead, I feel like they might come out of the kelp a little bit more, kind of venture out and see what's out there. Um, so we're really gonna work the edge of the kelp line. Yesterday, the one we caught was just like right in the middle of the kelp. Hopefully we won't have to do that, at least in the morning here. So, so yeah, that's the game plan. We'll see how it goes. Like, so the one I caught yesterday, I was just, like, I pitched it in there. Like, I pitched it on the other side of them, and then kind of, like, brought it back through. Yeah. If you pitch it right on top, like, they'll just swim off, usually. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. And then just kind of, like, jigged it, like, one little, like, pop. Yeah. And then he grabbed it. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I think, I think they're in there. crazy how such a huge school of huge fish can really just kind of hide out here but that's what happens that's why they call them the ghosts a lot of people call them the gray ghosts I think or just ghosts ghostly because they're kind of looking around you don't see them but they're there and then the gray ghost I think they call them the gray ghosts because they bite a lot better at gray light which is what we have right now They're not as balled up as they were yesterday. I see them more like solo, and I think they're just out hunting, honestly, which is why they're a little more spread out here. But um, I spooked a school of maybe like five or six, and then I saw a bunch of like onesie twosies here and there and there, and then I pitched my squid at one, and he kind of swiped at it, but didn't get hooked. But they're definitely in here. I mean, it was gonna be the same thing as yesterday where it's super combat fishing. We're in the middle of the kelp bed again, but. You know, you got to do what you got to do. Oh, I just missed one. Tore my swim bait up. Get back in there. Yeah, I just spit it. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. It was small. I think it was even undersized. Dang, just missed one, or just lost one. I think it was small though. One thing I will say as I'm driving around or scanning the surface like this while standing, it's nice to have this nice stable kayak, but also super important to wear your kill cord. You should always wear it, but especially if you're standing up like this and driving around, very easy to lose your balance, pop in, and if you don't have that kill cord on you, your kayak's just gonna drive away. You're gonna be stranded out here, so super important to wear that. You should wear it at all times. Anyway, but especially when you're Standing, looking around, scanning the surface, casting. All it takes is one little ripple. You know, you're not really paying attention. Boom, you can be in the water. Oh man, alright. Well, it seems to be slowing down a little bit. I mean, yesterday I caught my fish at like 2 p.m., so, you know, I definitely get catch fish in the afternoon, but. I haven't seen a big school of fish in a while. I see a couple of onesie twosies here and there, but you know that big school that we were fishing this morning. I haven't seen them in a while. I don't know what happened to them. I'm sure they're around here somewhere, but we just haven't found them. So we're gonna keep on at it. Nick Nick took off. Just me and Taku now. This is the final stretch. I think we're gonna do give it another hour. If I don't see anything, then maybe we'll head on out of here. Alright, I'm gonna start wrapping up. 
for day two. Somewhat of a non-eventful day, but man, so many fish. Probably saw 100, 150 sea bass swim by my kayak this morning. But I couldn't get any of them to bite. I'm just go out and say I think this might be the one, one of the most frustrating fish out there. Just judging by the fact that you can see them swim right under your kayak, hundreds of them. They're just totally locked up. But anyways, enough chatting. I think I'll see you tomorrow morning. Alright, day three. This is the last day I'm going for this, so it's all or nothing today. Today we got Taku again, and then we subbed out Nick for Ensei. So it's me, Taku, and Ensei today. Actually, Nick might be coming later, but for now, it's three of us. We're headed out. We're gonna go try to find that school again like we did yesterday and the day before. And today we're gonna see if we can get him to buy. I bought a few different uh, swim bait type lures and one jerk bait actually. So a couple of different things that I might throw at him today because obviously what we were using yesterday didn't really work. I mean, we've got some bites, but I'm gonna try to keep, keep mixing it up and see if I can find something that will really work for him. So anyways, first things first, we're gonna go find the school and see if we can get him today. All right, so I just passed through kind of one pass through where area where we had been seeing them the past few days past couple days I guess I should say and I didn't see anything so I'm gonna head out and really quick and see if I can find some live bait just to have that in my arsenal for when we do finally find them if we find them definitely not a guarantee but um, hopefully they'll show up here in a little bit and then hopefully I'll have some live bait to throw at them because I haven't done that yet that's one thing that I haven't tried that I think has a good chance to work So this is what I was talking about. We call these kingfish. I think they're actually, maybe they're called white croaker. I don't really know, but uh, anyways, this is like the little cousin of the big cousin we're looking for. But these, you can use these as live bait, but I don't think sea bass would hit this. So anyway. Oh, a little salmon or steelhead. Oh, it's salmon. Not what we were trying to catch on the sabiki, but we want to take the best care of this guy. Make sure we get him off. Yeah, it's a little salmon. Grow up big, buddy. Yeah, there's some over here too. Well, unfortunately, this is how this video is going to end. It would have been nice to finish with a nice sea bass in my lap, but, you know, that's fishing. And especially with sea bass, you never really know what's going on with these fish. Um, yeah, I guess I was just, well, I was really lucky to hook one on that first day. Otherwise, this would have been a, a tough little video here. But luckily, I got one for three days effort. It would have been nice to finish, you know, with one on the last day, but... Definitely can't complain with my one fish. Just flowing through a few kelp beds here on the off chance that there's a fish around, but we looked long and hard this morning, all three of us, and we didn't find anything. So it seems like these fish have moved on. I don't know where they went. That's why they call them the gray ghost. They can just vanish out of thin air. But anyways, that concludes the video. I'm very proud of the one fish that I did actually get. That was a nice sea bass. I think it's, well, it's definitely the biggest sea bass I've caught from a kayak. I did actually. Yeah. Sorry, NC's asking for a gap. I think he's got a hell of it. Oh, and one more thing. Special shout out to Crispy Fish. He uh, gave me a lot of help on this little hunt, even though he wasn't in the video. And uh, he did another sea bass video on his channel. He has to check it out. So I'll leave that link in the video description. So check that out. We're off to the next adventure. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.